So hello everyone and welcome to our webinar about finding the ideal material for 3D printed orthopedic applications. My name is Kerstin and I'm here with my colleague Julia who is working closely with our partner Spentis, a meta company offering a 3D scanning, modeling and printing platform that helps you integrating 3D printing in your workflow. In this webinar, Julia and Benoit, who is production manager at Spentis, will share a framework with you that helps you understanding the pros and cons of different 3D printing materials and technologies, and they will present some real life use cases. And now I'd like to hand over to Julia and Benoit, so please introduce yourselves. Yeah, thank you very much, Kerstin, for your introduction and the warm welcome to everyone participating in today's webinar. My name is Julia Roth and I will be holding this webinar together with Benoit from our partner Spentis. I'm a business development manager at BSF Forward AM and I'm responsible for the support of our customers and partners to find the best solution for their applications, um, which includes choosing the right 3D printing technology, but also material. I've been in this role now for a good one and a half years and I have a um, degree in chemical engineering. And now over to you, Benoit. Could you please also introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, first, I would like to thank you, Julia and Kirsten, for organizing this webinar. It's a pleasure for Spentis to be there today. Uh, we really enjoy working with uh, BASF as a supplier of high quality materials. My name is Benoit Frisk, and I'm a mechanical engineer. I've been working for four years as R&D project leader and beginning 2021, I've joined Spentis as production manager. The floor thanks is yours. Benoit. Perfect. So thanks, Benoit. Let's have a quick look on today's agenda. So um, to start off, I would like to give you a short summary of orthopedic applications and how 3D printing can be implemented in this field. We will then briefly look at the different 3D printing technologies and the pros and cons of each. And after that, Benoit will talk you through three um, real life use cases of 3D printed orthopedic applications. And he will also present a framework on, on how to find the right material and technology for your application. And last but not least, we are there to answer all your open questions. So before we jump right into the topic, let's start off with a short explanation on orthosis and prosthesis and their aims. Orthosis and prosthesis are medical aids um, that can be used, for example, after an accident or an in injury, but also as a support within a longer therapy or for patients with handicaps. While orthosis support a specific body part um, for the purpose of stabilization, immobilization or posture correction, Prosthesis on the other side substitute um, a part, a body part, which is missing. As you can tell, both types of devices are in close contact with the respective body part. And because each body and each human person is individual and unique, um, a perfect fit is crucial to allow for a comfortable fit, but also for fully functional performance. And this is, of course, one of the many benefits why 3D printing is an ideal solution for orthopedic applications. With the design freedom offered by 3D printing, parts can, can be individualized for each patient. So when we look at the orthopedic 3D printing market, um, we can see that the demand is actually supposed to further increase over the next years. Um, but although the market is growing, there is actually um, still, yeah, there are still some hurdles, as you can see on the slide, um, why many companies are still hesitant to adopt the technology. And if we are looking at a survey that was conducted by Sculpteo last year in 2020, we can see that 51% mentioned that the knowledge gap is one of the main factors limiting them to adopt 3D printing. So this means that actually more than half of the survey participants feel that their limited knowledge makes it difficult to adopt additive manufacturing. To mitigate this factor, we at BSF Forward AM offer our clients to support them and potentially even outsource their production to us. Um, the next two factors that were mentioned by 59% and 36% are linked to the costs of entering the technology, but also the operating costs. And this is a really a crucial aspect that needs to be taken into consideration when interacting with new entrants to 3D printing. 
So to make sure that the orthosis and other devices can be printed without having to make an initial investment or to buy like a 3D printer, our partner Spentis also offers a printing service for their clients. With 34 and 30%, the next two pillars are related to the types and availability of 3D printing materials. And this is, of course, where we at BSF are called into action. As you will see as we move along this presentation, we offer a wide portfolio of materials for all common technologies and can therefore provide the right material for each specific application and need. So now that we have looked at the hurdles of adopting 3D printing, let's now have a look on the various benefits that 3D printing offers in the field of orthopedic applications. Due to the freedom of geometry, the parts can be designed in a way that only the necessary areas of the part are printed, which means that less material is needed and therefore the final device is very light in weight. 3D printing also allows for individual designs that are aesthetically appealing, but also customized to each patient. Considering the variety of 3D printing materials offered by BSF, we can make use of different characteristics such as water resistance or biocompatibility that are very convenient for orthopedics. And as I mentioned, 3D printing allows for the individualization of parts, which means that actually um, we can achieve a very high wearing comfort. Another benefit is that the device can be printed within a very short time so that the patient gets his or her device within really short lead times. And last but not least, 3D printing orthopedic devices can, um, is very waste efficient, especially if we compare it to conventionally manufactured plaster casts. Let's just briefly look at the different body areas for which orthopedic and prosthetic applications can be needed. Firstly, um, this can be the upper limbs, such as hand, elbow, forearm. Secondly, the patient's lower limbs, which includes, for example, the legs or also knee, ankles, um, but also the foot. Another application area is the head and the neck. And lastly, um, the torso of the patient, which includes, um, for example, the back and the chest. Um, so as you can see, orthosis and prosthesis can be applied to basically all parts of the body and have a wide field of, of application. And Benoit will explain now how you can get um, the orthopedic device for a specific body part. Yeah, exactly. As Julia just said, we can do many different applications uh, with those 3D technologies. And Spentis is uh, with a solution there that enables the CPO to use those 3D technologies and their added value for the practices and their patients. So how do we do that? We have developed an all-in-one solution uh, that starts from 2D scanning, uh, 3D modeling, and then 3D printing. Um, so it all starts by 3D scanning the, the limb of the patient. It can be any limb, the foot, the head, the arm. Um, and once the scan is good, you can directly rectify um, the, the scan on the application. Once the scan is good, you can start doing the modeling on, on the app, or you can ask to our designers to to do the design for, for you, um, and they will make sure to do a design that meets all your requirements. Then the next step is the 3D printing, and that's why we are here today to help you choosing the right material and the right 3D printing technology for your application. So we'll come back to that later. And once the auto this is printed, it can be directly fitted uh, to the patient. So at Spentis, we have already had thousands of patients using the, the this 3D, um, 3D printed splints, and uh, they were really uh, happy with it. So now um, Julia is going to present you the 3D printing technologies and um, and the different applications of those. Great. Thanks very much, Benoit. So um, before we start looking into the actual real life use cases, um, let's have a brief look on the different technologies that can be used for the printing. So yeah, we can get a better understanding. So basically the technologies can be segmented into three different groups, depending on the type of material that is used to print the final part. The easiest technology in terms of handling is based on printing filaments. 
and it is called fused filament fabrication or in short FFF. So to print the part, um, you've also just seen this nice video, um, basically this thermoplastic filament is melted and then extruded through a nozzle and the material is deposited layer by layer on a printing platform. The hardware and materials are relatively low cost and there's a wide range of materials available. And as mentioned before, the technology is quite self-explanatory. So the only, um, so only limited training is basically required. The cons on the other side of this technology is that the resolution and also the surface finish of the part is not as high as compared to the other technologies, which I will talk about in a second. Um, but it's still very acceptable. And also the design options are a bit more limited than other technologies, but for most applications, the benefits of FFF printing outweigh the cons. So when we look at the second technology, it is based on powder that is basically fused by an energy source like a laser or a lamp. And we can differentiate between selective laser sintering, also called SLX, and multi-jet fusion, MJF. But basically both technology, um, technologies have the same pros and cons. The main pros of this technology is that the printed parts can achieve very excellent mechanical properties and there are no support structures needed because the part is printed within a powder bed. Compared to FFF, for example, there are not as many materials available and also the initial investment is a bit higher and printing takes a bit longer. But for some applications like a prosthetic socket, for example, this is really negligible because of the advantages that are actually offered by the technology and the, the materials for this technology. Lastly, on the right hand side, um, and the third technology is printing resins. So resin is a liquid that is cured layer by layer using a light source, such as a laser or a projector. And um, what we can get with resin printing is that actually the accuracies are very high. We can print very fine details and also in a relatively short printing time. If we think about disadvantages, the cons of this technology is that um, actually you also need equipment for, for handling the part after the printing, the so-called um, post-curing. And also some materials are a bit sensitive to UV light. Um, yeah, I hope that with this slide, I could explain you the different technologies. And with that being said, I will now hand over to Benoit again, so he can talk us through three real life use cases of 3D printed orthopedic applications. Yes, yeah, so the first application um, is a face mask for patients who had a, a nose fracture. Uh, so we have been discussing with a C the CPO of this patient and uh, in order to understand the requirements. And basically um, it had to, to resist strong shocks and protect the nose in any case. So we decided to go uh, for carbon fiber reinforced PET filament with the uh, FFF technology because it's uh, really resistant to shocks while staying very light. So it's very uh, comfortable for the patient and allows him to, to go on with his activities or sport uh, that he's doing. Um, and uh, it is it gives very good aesthetics as well. The, the finishing of the product is really good. Um, we had more than 20 professional sport players that used it for the competitions. For example, for the Olympics, uh, we had some, some players and they were really satisfied uh, with this product. So that's something we really recommend uh, for um, the material we recommend for the masks. The next material uh, and the next use case is uh, for baby's helmet. Um, so the, the baby is a three month old uh, baby who has pl plagiocephaly and the, the doctor wants him to, to wear a helmet to have a more symmetric uh, skull after, the, after um, wearing this helmet. So we have been discussing a lot with the, the technician to understand uh, the needs uh, for the, this kind of product. And we found out that the PA11 or Nylon 11 uh, combined with SLS technology or MGF technology 
was the best option for for this application why first um, in terms of make mechanical properties it has a good balance between the flexibility and the resistance that we want so you can still um, put it on the patient it's flexible enough to to put it but then it helps getting the, the skull in the white shape um, second thing is that you can customize this uh, this helmet with drawings or uh, different shapes of alveolis, that kind of stuff, because the, those technologies allow for very high uh, end result and uh, very precise finishing. Last thing I would like to mention is that we can print uh, the um, that kind of helmet all in one, including the, the closing system, uh, because this technology allows uh, to print revolt supports and uh, print everything all at once. So th that makes it very convenient. You don't have to, to make additional um, post-processing and uh, assembly afterwards um, once it's, it's printed. And one more thing I would like to add is that the PA11 is available on quite a lot of printers worldwide. So you can find easily a, a production center that can print it for you. And finally, the last application um, is for uh, a patient that has a distal radius fracture. Um, and we had a, um, a technician asking us how could he print it in a fast way? Because when you have a fracture, of course, you need your splint to be ready quite fast. Uh, so we propose him to use the DLP technology uh, combined with uh, ST45 resin. And it allows to print that kind of splint that you, you see on the white in uh, less than three hours, including the, the post-curing step. So it's uh, the, the shortest that you can do on the market for the moment. Um, and so it's very convenient for the, uh, the traumatic pathologies. Uh, it also gives a very good comfort because the precision uh, of this technology is really good. And in terms of uh, material, this ST45 is quite similar, I would say, to polypropylene in terms of rigidity, but it's a bit more brittle. Um, and we can, of course, play a bit on, on the thickness to make it more or less rigid, depending on, on your needs. Um, but we advise this mostly for traumatic pathologies because the lifetime might be a bit shorter compared to other materials due to the UV light sensibility. Uh, it won't last for years um, as for as other material uh, we could use. So that was it for uh, the three uh, use cases. Now let's go into the, the framework and how to select really the, the good material and the good technology for each of your orthotic uh, and prosthetic applications. So first, uh, what I would like to suggest is that you should select your uh, your uh, technology. And as Julia presented, uh, yeah, there are three different types of uh, technologies. So we have FFF. Uh, with a quick recap, this is very low cost, um, very user friendly, but provides lower quality. Then if we compare this to powder based, um, the base has higher end product quality, very good mechanical properties, but you need to invest a bit more of money uh, if you want to, to buy such a printer. Of course, it's always possible to outsource uh, your production, but it's going to be still a bit more expensive than FD FFF. Um, and then lastly, we have the resin-based technologies, which also provide uh, high quality orthotics and have the advantage of being very fast, especially for the DLP. But I would say that the lifetime is usually a bit uh, shorter. So once you have selected your technology, what we recommend is uh, for orthotic application to, to select the flexibility that you want. Do you want it to be flexible, uh, semi-rigid or completely rigid? That's up to you, depending on the pathologies that you have to, to decide this. And then depending on, um, on on the flexibility, you can choose from all the materials we have put here. So I won't go through all of them uh, now in details, but I would like to give you an example on how, on how to select uh, the correct material for, for your application. So for example, if you want, uh, let's say, a splint for a hand, uh, a CMC thumb brace, 
um, you would like a very good uh, finishing, that you would like something a bit flexible, I would definitely go for the TPU uh, in SLS or MGF um, that you can see there. But if you want now something a bit cheaper, you don't you don't really care about the quality uh, and the finishing, you can go to uh, FFF TPU, which also provides a flexible um, um, yeah, result. And another example now, if you want something uh, really rigid um, that will last for long, uh, let's say a Palmar and ventral support for your forearm, um, there um, I would say this is something you will need to to have for two, three, four years maybe. Um, you need a high quality there. I would definitely go for the PA11 with a four millimeter thickness to make it really stiff. Uh, so th this is uh, PA11, you can find it either on MGF or SLS technologies. Um, so after, um, after this presentation, we will share with you a more complete uh, two-pager that you will um, that you will be able to analyze, and you will have more detailed information about about all the properties uh, of those different materials offered by BSF, and that we have uh, experience with at uh, Spentis. So, with this framework, we really think you can get to work with 3D printing. Um, if you have never worked with 3D printing technologies, I think this is a good starting point. Um, and you can easily try out uh, the BSF materials through our application. Uh, we are really open to, to, to help you on that. And we have application specialists uh, ready to, to come back to you if you have any question after the webinar. Um, and you can also uh, contact us on, via email or on LinkedIn. Thank you yeah. for listening. Speaking about contacting you, um, if you have any questions, you can find um, Julia's and Benoit's contact details on the next slide. So definitely feel free to approach us, feel free to approach them um, if you want to start with reprinting or have uh, some specific questions, always feel free to contact um, our presenters. So with this being said, I would like to end the webinar. Talk to you soon. Thanks for joining and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good day.